We are born from the union of a woman's ovum, which has a water content of over 70%, and a male's spermatozoon, which density, and also its quality, depend almost entirely on its water content. Through the process of cellular division, these two cells are turning into tens, thousands, millions, and tens of trillions of cells, forming the internal and the external organs, and ultimately, the human body. Although made of over 70% water, every cell has its own respiratory system, digestive, excretory, endocrine, integumentary, nervous, reproductive, and immune system, and the normal functioning of these systems, as well as the cell's health and ability to reproduce, are strictly related to the cell's water content. We spend our first 38 to 40 weeks in our mother's womb, surrounded by the amniotic fluid. In this watery environment, we develop all our major anatomical systems by swallowing and breathing the amniotic fluid, which is 98% water. In our fetus stage, the body is about 94% water. As we grow, the percentage of water drops to about 78% as infants, 60% as adults, and 50% as elderly. As adults, all our major internal organs and fluids are made up of water. The blood is about 92% water. The lungs are about 84% water. The muscles and kidneys are about 79% water. The heart, the brain, the spinal cord, and the nerve trunks, they're all about 73% water. The skin is about 65% water, and even our bones are 31% watery. Of course, these values are just estimates, because there is no universal method for determining the percentage of water in human bodies as individuals. The estimations vary with factors such as the type of population sampled, the number of people sampled, and the methodology used, and each method has its advantages and disadvantages. No single method allows the measurement of the water content from all tissues and organs, nor is error-free. The water content in the human body depends greatly on sex, age, and body structure, among many others. For instance, fat tissue has less water than lean tissue and, because in women, fat makes up more of the body than men, generally, women have less water than men, while people with more fatty tissue have less water than people with more muscular tissue. Nevertheless, from a chemical point of view, if we'd zoom inside any human body at the molecular level, we'll find an ocean of 99% hydrogen and oxygen molecules. It's like we would find ourselves inside a cell, start counting until a hundred, and we would repeat the word water for 99 times. And one time out of a hundred we would say, DNA, protein, magnesium, or calcium. However, the water from the cells is not just regular H2O. In 2013, Dr. Gerald Pollack, professor of bioengineering at the University of Washington, USA, published a book, The Fourth Phase of Water, Beyond Solid, Liquid, and Vapor. In his book, Dr. Pollock argues that inside the cells there is an exclusion zone, in which the water pushes out any impurities, similar to the crystals found in ice. This EZ water, as Dr. Pollock called it, has a molecular structure of 3 to 2 hydrogen-oxygen ratio, so its chemical formula would be H3O2, and it has kind of a gel phase between solid and liquid. Dr. Pollock and his team also found that when infrared electromagnetic radiation is applied, the EZ water builds and doesn't diminish. Not only this, but the water found in the EZ zone can hold energy, much like a battery, and can deliver energy too. Dr. Pollock believes that the easy water might explain why water is gathering only into a few wandering white clouds on a clear blue sky, even above the oceans, although it evaporates from all the Earth's surface. Or how do clouds made up of dense water droplets float in the sky? Actually, water is the only substance found in nature that is visible with the naked eye in three different states, liquid, solid, and gaseous. 
even though, under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, both its components are odorless, colorless, and tasteless gaseous substances, thus invisible to our physical senses.